Hey guys, it's David from My Wagon Dioramas. Just doing a quick live video for my workbench here. I'm painting some foam rocks. This is just uh, blue styrofoam here that I carved with a hot wire cutter the other day. I put a black base coat on it and I need to uh, dry brush these to bring out the texture of the mountain. So I thought I'd just do a quick live video, show you guys how that goes. I mixed up some acrylic paint here. Got a gray color here with some basic black and white paint, a little bit of brown. I was trying to kind of color match the rocks on the Sentinel here because this is our backdrop for the Sentinel display at Chris Con. And my cat just popped in here. Hello, kitty. No, you don't want to drink that paint. So anyway, if you guys want to check that out with me, I'm happy to chat with anyone who's watching and uh, ask me questions about anything with dioramas or Star Wars in general and I will respond. I am going to uh, work on this for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so. I've got five big pieces I've got to paint. So, and I do have the ceiling fan on here because it's hot here today. So if that has a little bit of background noise, sorry about that. But basically what I'm doing is basically um, just bringing out the texture. You can see this is one I just did. So you got the black base coat versus the uh, a first first coat of gray there. And that just brings out all the ridges and grooves and, and texture that I put in the foam before I put the black base coat on. And it's just a quick and easy way to do a nice little backdrop. I mean, this is something pretty easy that anyone can do. Um, and I'll show you, you know, you don't need a fancy paintbrush. I do have a Citadel dry brush here which is meant mainly for smaller projects, like, you know, doing custom figures and things. But it works just as well on this. It's just that the dry brush has basically shorter, stiffer bristles, and you don't use a lot of paint when you're dry brushing. That's why I have this paper towel here. I'm dipping the brush in the paint, but then I'm, uh, you know, wiping it off. So there's barely any paint on the tip of the brush when you draw it across. And that's not enough paint, actually. I need more paint than that. So I'm just going to dip a little bit of paint in the, dip the brush in the paint and uh, dab it off here. And go to town. I kind of, since I cut the grooves here kind of vertically as I cut around the edge of the foam, uh, I'm going to go perpendicular to that and draw the brush across the grooves. And if I get the camera angle right here, you'll see it start to pop out. And that's all there is to it. So, very simple thing to do. It might feel intimidating if you've never done it before, but styrofoam is pretty cheap. Paint is cheap, it's very forgiving. You can just kind of experiment with this stuff and you'll get the feel for it. You see how it brings out the, the texture in the grooves of the styrofoam there. Let me pull up the chat, see if anybody is in here. I've got two people watching right now. Yeah, please say hello if you're watching and you want to engage at all. Be happy to chat with folks. This uh, backdrop is part of a an eight foot long tabletop diorama I'm working on with some buddies for this weekend's show. And we're gonna, we're gonna set up a bunch of the HasLab Sentinels and a bunch of, bunch of X-Men figures, Marvel Legends, and have them uh, fighting the Sentinels. So I just wanted a couple kind of basic rocky mountain type backdrops and scene pieces to put around them so that we could uh, set the guys up in different elevations and different use some wires for some flight stand poses that sort of thing so i'm not spending a lot of time on this but just trying to give a little bit of definition to it something so it's, it's not quite as just a boring uh black tablecloth we got some pieces there to look at make the scene more interesting 
Oh, see, I went a little too heavy right there with the paint. I didn't have my brush uh, dabbed off enough, so now I got solid paint there and kind of, that was too much. So you want it just barely any paint on the brush when you're dry brushing. And you go in the same direction, back and forth, back and forth. Now my cat needs to be let out of the room, so excuse me one moment. You need to go out, do you? Go. This is the type of wire cutter I used to cut this foam. This is a uh, by Woodland Scenics. Got on Amazon, I think, for around thirty-five bucks. It's nice because the, the wire gets hot. You know, obviously, and you just kind of go in and out with the wire, and that's what makes all those grooves. You got to go real slow. You, the wire does break after a while, um, but it works okay for a pretty inexpensive tool. Get all this cool shapes and stuff you can do with it. So if you're curious how I made the foam that's that's what this was and this is just layers of of blue this this particular foam is a blue colored extruded polystyrene um, got it from a construction site these were extra scraps and stuff and I just glued them together in layers with hot glue after uh, trimming them down and last night I put the base coat of just black acrylic paint over everything and now I'm doing the highlights with the gray color I'm going to continue on. Yeah, let me know in the chat where you're watching from. I like uh, I like chatting with folks online in the community. And if you have any questions or anything, let me know. This is, a again, very basic kind of a starting you know technique. There's lots of videos out there on dry brushing, so... This isn't anything very uh, sophisticated at all. But some people probably haven't seen it, and I thought since I'm doing it here, I might as well turn on the camera and multitask, right? Have YouTube running while I'm doing these projects. Oh, I should add that um, you see some of these surface gouges and marks here. I did that with a sharp rock that I just rolled around into the foam. You'll see other videos like that where you can, you can, you can actually create indentations and grooves and random kind of distress to the surface of the styrofoam uh, using a chunk of rock. Some people use tin foil. It just makes it so it's not all smooth and uniform. Makes it looking looks a little more um, natural looking. And again, this 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 particular project is kind of a get it done fast type project for me. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on details here because the focus of this particular diorama is going to be the the X-Men figures and the Sentinels. And uh, this is really just to give the figures something to stand on and the star foam. We're also going to stick some wires into the foam for some of the flying characters. So it allows us to have something to support those wires with. But you get a sense of it. It's coming together there. And I just continue to dip the brush in the paint and then dab most of the paint off so there's just a little bit left on the bristles and draw it perpendicular across the grooves that I've cut. And it leaves the black base coat in the depressions and the grooves and the gray highlights the uh, raised portions. This is a very common technique used in all kinds of uh, painting projects and dioramas and sculptures and miniatures, everything. So you see a lot about dry brushing, but all it is, is it just means that the paintbrush is kind of dry. There's not as much paint on it. You're not fully coating the surface. You're just brushing over the 
the raised edges and portions of it. What's neat about dry brushing is that you can you can get a lot of color variation by doing multiple coats of this. And I usually start dark, so I start with the black base coat. And so I have this gray, I mixed up white and black together to get this kind of base coat of gray. And if I wanted to, I could do another application of dry brush after this by adding some more white, you know, lightening up the gray and doing it again, a little less, a little more, you know, more lightly and continue that process till even some people will, will put even bright white, just some highlights on the very edges of the rocks to really make the, them stand out. And I might do a little bit of that. It depends how much time I have. I'm kind of, like I said, trying to get this done quickly without a lot of effort. So I think I'm just going to stay with this one gray coat. So I think that's enough for what I need. But uh, you know, this was the same technique I used, for example, in my Hoth diorama, which has the ice cave for the Wampa for my Star Wars Black series. And cut the foam the same way. But in that case, I painted the foam a deep blue, and then I did maybe four or five different coats of, of, of white. Start, you know, light blue, lighter, lighter, and lighter, and lighter until it was going to bright white. You can see, uh, I think I have at least one or two quick videos there on the Hoth diorama on my channel. On these flat surfaces here, I'm, you know, I went a little heavy in some spots, but again, it's not, it's not that critical here. I just want to give a little bit of color and contrast to the foam. It's kind of fun doing this type of painting because it's, it's very, very easy and you get results really quickly. I mean that's that's basically that's basically done for me at this point. I cut these pieces so I have a little bit of some shelves here, or kind of some like like terraces here, so I could stand a, a figure here. This is going to be for six inch scale Marvel Legends figures, um, so you can stand some figures up on top or on these different elevations. And because they they all have a flat back. We can move them around, they're mobile. We can set it up a couple different ways. But that's what this is going to be used for. I'm going to get the next large piece here. Pardon my workbench. This is kind of what it looks like all the time. So, if the camera will pick this up, this is the largest piece I made. Get this stuff out of the way here. But eventually, you can see how tall this is. So, this is a three inch foam. I got one, two, three, four, five sections, so 15 inches tall. I've got two of these kind of mountain corner backdrops. They're, they're triangular. So they're going to bookend the ends of the table. Um, and again, this is for a eight foot long, two foot deep tabletop diorama. We're going to have three of the big HasLab Sentinels set up and like 20 X-Men figures fighting them. So it's going to be pretty fun. We're doing it for uh, Chris Con, which is, you probably, if you've seen my channel, you've probably seen me talk about it. Um, and trying to promote it, but it's going to be a cool event happening this Sunday um, in Taunton, Massachusetts. And it is a action figure collector meetup slash convention put on by my friend Chris, who I met through Instagram about a year and a half ago. And Chris Con is something he's always dreamed of doing, which is basically just getting other collectors together to share our love of action figures and all that's related to that so we're gonna we're gonna have a four hour time window where we've got a hotel ballroom rented out and we are going to 
set up all the fun stuff that we love, like dioramas and toy photography stations and share custom figures and uh, have contests and trivia and just some fun giveaways and things like that. And there's also going to be some table vendors there. We've sold tables to help support the, you know, cover the cost of the of the venue. And uh, it's five bucks a head to get in. So that also helps cover the cost of the hotel. But basically it's going to be a fun time of just hanging out with other collectors, seeing other people's, you know, creative works and the dioramas and the customs, taking a ton of cool photos with different figures and dioramas that, you know, maybe you wouldn't have access to normally. And, uh, We've also got some cool vendors coming. Uh, we reached out to local toy companies. You know, we're in we're in Massachusetts, so there's Hasbro's pretty close, and there's also Boss Fight Studios, and Mythic Legions is coming. One of the, you know, Jeremy Gerard from Mythic Customs, who does the the marketing for Mythic Legions, he's buddies with one of our friends, so he's going to come and have a table set up. He'll have some figures for sale and showing off some of his customs. And then we also got Bobby Valla from Action Force who's in Rhode Island, and he's going to come set up a table, so that's pretty cool. we got some other local guys, Vitruvian, um, Vitruvian Armory, which does accessories for the Vitruvian Hacks, and a bunch of other guys coming, so I, th I think it's going to be a real fun time. Anyway, enough chatting about that. Let's do some more dry brushing. So again, just as, this is basic you know, acrylic paint from uh, Michael's, I think, where this is from, and uh, with the dry brush, you just you do minimal paint, and my goal here is to bring out the texture of the carving in the foam. So put the paint on the brush, dab it on a paper towel, and just start going across it like this. And you can immediately see the texture of the foam coming out. Real simple technique, very forgiving. If you screw up, it's uh, not too hard to to fix it. I mean, if, if I put too much paint on or something, I suppose I could go back over it with black again and, and redo it. Um, like I said earlier, I usually dry brush several several coats of dry brush on there to um, and I lighten it as I go. So after this gray, I might do a lighter gray and then an even lighter gray just by adding white to my mix until I'm almost at a whatever color you know I want to end on but usually you want some real bright highlights for the last coat and you might you might end up using like a bright white or if you're doing like reddish rocks like a, a really really light tan or yellowish color for some highlights So I'm just going to paint away. If anyone wants to chime in and chat, please feel free to do so. And uh, I will have some pictures posted probably this weekend on Instagram. There will be a ton of pictures posted from ChrisCon showing, uh, showing these, these foam pieces with the Sentinels. So you get to see kind of the finished product here in a few days. If you guys have never tried painting like this, it's pretty fun to do. You know, I started out with dioramas with my Star Wars Black Series figures because I wanted some backdrops for the figures. The first one I did was Jabba's Palace. I wanted a, a throne for him to sit on and uh, made that out of styrofoam. Sculpted the gar gargoyle heads just out of, out of modeling clay, actually. Now you can get those 3D printed pretty easy, but I didn't have that at the time and painted that in a very similar fashion to what I'm painting here. Started with a black base and then I used different shades of browns and tans and to, uh, to kind of dry brush the, the rocks of his throne. And then that one I finished off with 
some actually some some watery washes of some blacks and browns and even some greens to create kind of the, the final look of Java there. That was a fun project. That's how I got started in dioramas in the first place. Just because I wanted to have something better for Java to sit on on my shelf. After I did the throne, I thought, hey, you know what? I could do an archway behind him. And so I did the archway, and then I thought, you know, I could do more than an archway. I could do uh, maybe a little wall area where I could hang Han and Carbonite up there. And after thinking through it a little bit, I realized, yeah, this wouldn't be too hard to do. And that's that was one of the, the first main you know, diorama pieces I made for my Black Series collection was was uh, Java's Java's throne room. Very basic, just a, a back wall and and the throne to sit on. And for the floor, I didn't do anything. I just bought some uh, <laughs> some some vinyl floor tiles from Lowe's or Home Depot that kind of had a rocky brown texture and pattern to them. And that was it. I do want to do a better, you know, improved job as throne room at some point because that's it's one of my favorite scenes in all the films. Java's palace. But one project at a time. I find that it takes me a lot longer to get these projects done than that than I expect. brushing away. This is probably the largest foam diorama piece I've done so far. And it's very simple, but it's taking a lot of paint. It took me a lot of black paint <laughs> to do the base coat. So I've got yeah, two of these big corner bookend mountain pieces, and then I've got three smaller intermediary kind of middle pieces that I'm going to use. And then the base of the table is half inch foam. And that is eight feet long by two feet deep. So I had to paint all that too. So that's why I mixed up so much of this paint is because I want to get all of those pieces painted tonight. They have all the same uniform color to them. Coming together, very basic, but uh, it's going to look real nice once we get it all set up. If you're popping into the chat at all, feel free to say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. You know, if you have any questions, if you just want to talk Star Wars or whatever else, I'm game. I'm just working away here for a little bit, dry brushing these pieces. It's coming together pretty well. Oops, yeah, I went too much paint on that. Too heavy. A little sloppy. Chicago. Hi, Jay. How you doing, man? Remember you commented on something of mine a month or two ago. I'm just spending a little time tonight painting at my workbench. I thought I'd turn on YouTube just to let the, the camera roll in case anybody else was in there, out there, wanted to 
chat or chime in. Just doing some basic dry brushing tonight on these styrofoam mountain pieces. I just got off work like an hour ago, so. But I'm trying to get this stuff done for the weekend. So we can set up for our show. I'm excited I get to show off a bunch of my dioramas this weekend at our little action figure convention that we're doing. A bunch of my Star Wars dios. So I've never done that before. Kind of brought them out into public like that. It's going to be fun. And I get to see all the other cool dioramas that some other creators are making and custom figures and all that stuff. Thanks for the support, Jay. I forget, what have you done any, um, what kind of dioramas have you done? What type of projects have you done in the past or are you working on now? Um, the convention that I'm talking about is in Massachusetts. That's where I live. It's going to be this Sunday in in the in a hotel in Taunton, Mass. Just kind of between Boston and Providence, Rhode Island. And it's a small independent thing that we're putting on myself and uh, four or five other guys. Uh, it's the first time we're doing it in a real public manner like this, promoting it and have a, have a larger venue. So it's going to be fun. Your last diorama was Ninja Turtle sewer. Yeah, that's cool. I've seen some really cool, um, turtle dioramas. I think that's a fun, must be a fun setting to, to create, to do a sewer. Just cause just the, grit and the grime and the I don't know it just seems like a cool setting almost done with this big mountain piece here I got another one like this it's almost this big I gotta do next you guys probably can't see it it's probably off camera now let me see if I shift it around. Just put my brush in the paint and the bowl of paint and now it's coated. Don't want to go heavy on the paint when you're doing this. Think about it. it looks like I made way too much paint but I did not want to run out of out of paint halfway through the project because you try to mix up another batch and it's never quite going to be the same color I want everything to be consistent Yeah, this paint is just acrylic craft paint. I think it's from uh, either Michael's Craft Store or Walmart. I don't remember which one. Just basic acrylic. And I needed a gray color. I'm trying to color match. I'm trying to color match to this broken sentinel arm, which was a, a Toy Biz diorama piece from 2001. So we, we have like five or six of these. We're going to kind of spread around the the base of the diorama and so i'm trying to make the gray kind of match that eh, it's close close enough for me right now so i mixed a bunch of white and black and some brown 
and that's what I'm doing right now. Oh man, I gotta be careful, I'm going too, too heavy. So how'd you make the pipes for the turtles? Did you do it out of like a real real PVC pipe or cardboard? guys there's the jeez this thing is so big that's a view of the back just so you can see yeah five layers of three inch foam um just use hot glue to stick it all together and i painted everything black with acrylic black paint look at that that's awesome I feel like I need a I need an action figure that how about this guy? One of my retro Vader ones. I like these guys. These are cool. Uh, PVC pipes and plastic pipes from the builder straw. Oh cool, very nice. Alright. Well, Jay, I appreciate you watching. I'm going to have to sign off here in a few minutes because my wife is calling in the other room saying dinner's ready, and I don't want to miss that call. <laughs> you guys know how that goes. Um, but yeah, any questions, leave them in the comments below. This will post to my channel uh, whenever YouTube processes it. And But I just wanted to show basic dry brush techniques for those who may not have done it themselves yet and uh, how you can carve foam pretty easily. And create a pretty cool little backdrop. So that is it, guys. Stay tuned to my channel this weekend. I will have some photos up and check my Instagram. We'll have a bunch of photos from ChrisCon. Uh, if you want info on the convention I'm doing with the dioramas, it's hashtag ChrisCon22 after my friend Chris. And uh, we'll have a ton of stuff posted from that. It's going to be fun. But I'm going to sign off, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Jay. And uh, talk to you guys next time. See ya. Bye.